which brings us on to the new book, Crossfire. Can you tell us a little bit about it, um, and particularly what your fans will expect from Nick Stone this time? Well, this, it's a, another Nick Stone thriller. This time he's, uh, it starts off, he's in uh, uh, Iraq, now to the northwest of, of Basra, and he's looking after a, uh, um, a, a cameraman and reporter, a Polish uh, reporter who's quite a famous guy, you know, he's sort of, you know, sort of CNN type sort of anchor guy. And um, uh, and it's based on certainly that that section's based on my experience as I went off uh, to to uh, Iraq in May with with two battle groups, uh, one of them in the city in Basra, and one of them out um, out on the ground where they, where they're taking out the towns near near the border. And so I've used those experiences and put them into this context where um, Nick's out there is looking after uh, these guys. Once they get back into the city. Um, the, 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 the cameraman gets killed. Is writing enough for you? Do you ever get frustrated by the sort of the, the sedentary side well, of it? Yeah. That's, well, that's why my wife calls me a dickhead when I go out and do these trips. You know, you get invited by the battalions to go out. Um, so on this last trip, we got mortared twice and machine gunned and um, was there for about six days, you know. But these lads here are having it all, all, all the time. Um, so it's three trips I've done. I've done two to, to Iraq this year and, and one to Afghanistan. For research? So, um, do, you, do you get as is part of your security work? As, as there's a security? mixture. There's a mixture. Um, these 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 trips have, have, have been by invitation, and, and naturally because I'm there, I'll use that as as the the, the backdrop. Um, so I'll go to them, and always you know you get invites from from battalions to go over there and you know go on jobs with them, that sort of stuff. But, but why the invitation? Um, uh, purely because of, of you know the sort of you know being in in you know being in the army for eighteen years and it almost you know, as like works. a. A, a tourist, is it? So almost. They say, "Well, come on over," you know. And you go, "Yeah, okay." And you go, and I went on, on, on in in March. I went on a strike operation, where, on a house assault, and uh, so uh, we all rattled into Basra City. We had tanks and armoured vehicles and all the rest of it, and uh, we hit this house. And uh, and uh, they said, "Well, you coming along?" Well, yeah, okay. So we went along. Are you kitted out? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're up there in Kevlo, yeah. But even with uh, guns? And no, 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 no. Because no, you're no. just there as an yeah, observation? Just, uh, yeah, there's enough guns running around. They've got enough guns. It's like, you know. Um, no, they, you just get in with them, you know. They, they're good lads. It's all right. It's What's it like for you after being so sort of, you know, at the forefront of, of, of the army to then be essentially a passenger or a voyeur? Oh, no, I love it. I think it's great. I think it's great. It's because um, you get the best of both worlds. Okay, just to close then, what can we expect? For, uh, for Nick Stone as, as the future unravels. He's, yeah, Nick Stone's off next year, and he's, uh, I've got it all worked out, but I haven't got the story. But he's, he's gonna be, uh, next year he's gonna be in Northern Ireland. And what it's looking at is because there's a bit of Northern Ireland here when he goes over in Dublin, and um, uh, about, you know, rendition, about, you know, when people lift people, well, that's been going on for years, you know, we used to lift people in Dublin and rattle them up to Castle Ray in the north to the special branch uh, interrogation centre there. So what it is is, um, uh, Nick's going to go to Northern Ireland uh, uh, next year and he's really sort of going back to his own sort of territory that he knows and looking at, certainly you're looking at the you know, Irish terrorism where it's actually now Irish Mafia and the drugs and the prostitution, extortion, all those sort of things, um, you know, all involved with, you know, lads who are trying to get out of that and take the political route through Sinn Féin and, and different organisations. So next year he's, he's, he's off to Northern Ireland, which is great because, you know, so I've got some mates there, the battalion that I used to belong to there now. So I can see them and, and do the research at the same time. And what's happening with this, the the movies? Because obviously, the, the rights have been bought up. Yeah. How far off? Are yeah, they? The, the script's done, and uh, the, the, what I found in in uh, so certain, which book? Um, to Firewall. But what I found is is that um, uh, they've been sold three times now when options are up, and people make more money by not making a film than they do making it, and it's great. So, but this time the script's done, and it's going forward now and doing it, 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 its process. But um, it's the film business is amazing how, how these, these these things work. Um, so over the last what I don't know, four or five years, it's it's been sold three times, which is fantastic. It's great. <laughs> you don't have to do any work. It's great. What do you like in these meetings with the, the Hollywood people and the publishers? I mean, are you pretty a tough nut to deal with? No, no. I, it's like you just let them go on with it. You got lawyers to do all that sort of stuff. You? So you're just going and and it's certainly in the states. It's great because you you uh, uh, you know it's it's there's, there's this sort of this protocol, so everybody walks in with a Starbucks and you know, and all this, and everyone's worried about the fluorescent lights because obviously we're all going to get cancer, and it's all that sort of stuff. It's great, I love it. I think it's good fun. It's good fun, actually. Andy, thank you very much. All thank the best you. with Crossbar, Pleasure. and thanks so much for your time today. Thank you. Brilliant.
One last question. If you had just one bullet and you had to kill someone, English, British. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that rules out George Bush. <laughs> Who would it be? Oh. I don't know. Who's, who's really, really pissed you off over the years that would get it? No one really. I, you know, I, I get to the point where I don't really give a shit no more. I, it's, it's, um, you know, you, you, you go through sort of life where there's, there's guys who've pissed you off and you know, all that sort of stuff. What I would do actually would have two two rounds, and the guys, the, certainly the the, the um, not so much the military interrogators uh, when I was, was captured because they, they were quite good. They said, well, you know, we've got a job to do, let's crack on with it. Um, but it was two of the the the, the, the intelligence guys. Who, who really enjoyed it, you know. I don't know if their families have been killed with the bombings or what, you know, I don't really care. But actually, they, they, they do it. Um, so if, actually, no, with one bullet, put their heads together. If I could get away with it, I'd kill them, yeah. Yeah, the two Iraqis, the, 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 the two uh, uh, intelligence guys, yeah. Yeah. <laughs>